Okay then, it's uh, time to finish the Back to the Future bike. Um, yes, that. Yes, that's it. It's it's finished, and I'm covering the surprises. But enough of that. Let's just get to it. And um, oh, and for everybody who's asking on my Instagram, no, no, I haven't cleaned my desk yet. Okay, so if you if you're watching this video before you've seen the, the first video, I'd probably say stop and go back and watch the first video first. This is the Back to Future build that I'm doing for my dad. Um, but if you want to know more and kind of catch up, catch yourself up a little bit, head back to the first video. It's linked below, uh, and uh, we'll move on with the build. Um, also, people have asked a lot about these uh, re paint removal stripper discs that I've been using. Um, I'm going to try and put links below of all the bits I've used, especially the ones that people have been asking about. Um, but I highly rate them. I think they work really well. So the stripper disc worked pretty well, but I did have to go through some of the kind of like the welds and like some of the really tight spots and kind of put some paint remover on there as well. Like in the first video, I mentioned that uh, it leaves scratches on there, which is fine. I kind of like that because I want that brush still effect. So it kind of did what I wanted it to do. But the thing that I was curious about was how easily it would be to make it kind of polished. Uh, so I used some wet and dry um, sandpaper. Uh, I used a little WD-40 to kind of lube it up a little bit and um, kind of went to town on the top bar. Um, but I wasn't happy with the way it looked. Uh, I Again, I liked the, the scratches. I liked the brush still kind of the look. And this kind of just made it look a little bit flat. Obviously, I could polish it up and make it look really shiny, but it didn't feel like it would fit the build, which was lucky because it would have taken me ages. Uh, quick side note, uh, people buy me some really random novelty bike things as presents sometimes, and my mum got me these. They're um, really weird, but I use them a lot. Um, but I'm interested in, in the weirdest things someone's bought you, or maybe you've bought yourself. Uh, so comment below the weirdest bike-related thing that um, you actually use. So after a lot of experimenting with different uh, grades of sandpaper, um, I ended up uh, using pretty much 600 over the whole frame. And this was just to kind of like even out the scratches a bit, so like they were more consistent throughout the whole frame. Uh, but I was uh, pretty happy with it. It came out just as I imagined, which uh, rarely happens with me. So for the actual um, logos, decals, I need to make some stencils uh, for the actual bluing. I've used my Cricut to make these again, uh, and then just, which felt kind of unnatural, I reversed the peel, so I pulled out the inners instead of the outers, which felt really unnatural. So I've mentioned blue in a few times now. Um, if you've seen any old shovel videos, you've seen this stuff. He's done a couple of videos using it now. I don't know if there's a, another reason for this stuff to exist, but I know a lot of people in America in particular use it to touch up guns and stuff like that. Um, but it, it essentially reacts with steel and then changes the color. It changes it to a bluey black, hence the bluing and the super blue, um, which again, maybe is something to do with guns. I mean, I live in the UK, I don't know nothing about guns. But I wanted to test it out a little bit first, uh, so I did it on the bottom bracket, upside down, so you couldn't really see it, um, and then just did it, give it a little bit of a wipe, and left it for a little while. It does say to kind of leave it for about 30 seconds or so, and then wash it off with water, and then repeat as necessary. Once you have like a base layer that's reacted with metal already, it does seem to then step up a, a bit with the amount that it changes it. So I definitely think you always need at least mi minimum of two coats, so bear that in mind. But that was it. After a bit of testing, I just went to town on it. Um, big learn, less is more. There was a couple of times that it started dripping and it dripped past the actual uh, vinyl and then I had to very quickly try and wipe it up. It did leave a couple of marks and it's a pain in the ass to fix. So take your time, do a lot like smaller coats and um, it'll be a lot easier to do. But uh, yeah, it went quite well. Someone on my Instagram commented on a picture of this saying they couldn't believe how crisp the lines were. Well, as long as you stick the vinyl down tight and secure to the actual frame, it is, otherwise this happens. 
I basically use a bit of sandpaper in the end to just kind of like sand between the edges of the letters. Uh, it doesn't get it off completely, but it fades it enough that it's not obvious unless you're looking for it. Um, but I was still pretty bummed out about that. So the next morning, before I did a clear coat over the top of it, I wanted to give it a bit of a, a kind of a, a rough up. Uh, I used some wire wool. The actual instructions on the bluing said about using wire wool afterwards, kind of like, I, well, I don't really know why it didn't explain it, but I did that as well. For some reason as well, the vinyl left a bit of an edge on the frame. Um, so I used a little bit of sandpaper just to kind of like feather that back out again and then a bit more wire roll to just kind of like, yeah, even everything out. And then the very last step before I put the top coat on uh, was a bit of rubbing alcohol just to make sure there's no grease or grime or anything on there that was going to affect the paint in any way. I used a sprayed up bike clear coat for the bike and um, for the bike. I uh, used a matte finish as well, just because that's kind of the style I was going for. For masking, I always put Q-tips in any bolts and then roll that paper in the bottom bracket and the seat post. And it works a treat and doesn't take very long. And that's that all ready. Um, I'm gonna leave it for a couple of days now before I do the actual build itself, just to kind of make sure the, the top coat kind of sets as hard as it possibly can in the time frame I have. Obviously the day I go to build the bike, it was forecasted for rain all day. So uh, I made myself a bit of a outdoor workshop. It's pretty sweet. Okay then, let's get this thing built. DeLorean has a lot of like blue lights on it, uh, so I went blue accents on some of the bolts. I also decided to go black headset and black stem uh, because there's a lot of black on silver kind of look on the DeLorean stock before it even gets to turned into a time machine. I can't remember exactly, but the fork's a couple of millimeters longer than the original fork that was on this bike. So I had to put some sort of spacer in there. I had some off a, a normal kind of like threadless stem. Um, but it, it, it was like obviously a little bit too big, but once I tightened it down, it was, it was fine. I've had these Brooklyn bike handlebars knocking around for it a while. Not really sure what I was gonna do with them, but they were born for this bike. They look really cool. I didn't have enough money to buy new parts for everything, so this is a crank set off another bike. Um, it's a it's a Suntour, but it's pretty solid and it's uh, the right size for this bike. I did get some fresh V brakes, uh, some in black as well. The ones that are on this bike were silver. Probably could have made them look nice again, but I felt like the black would be quite a nice color. a one by eight 
Uh, I've used this a few times in the sort of areas that he's going to be using this bike and it's just the right amount. There's some serious hills but um, he's pretty strong. You'll get out there if you need to. And for the grips I use some Ore. A lot of you have actually suggested me trying these out um, on Instagram in particular. So uh, I've got a pair for this bike and I've also got a couple of sets for some other bikes that I'm building up soon as well. So they're definitely going to get tested out. And the last big accent colour would be the cables, so I went blue on these as well. Hang, hang on, the grips have gone. I've put this the wrong way around. The next morning I noticed there was sand everywhere in my garden, uh, and I couldn't work out what it was. It turns out the rain from the, the day before was uh, full of dust and sand from the Sahara Desert, because there was a storm there, and it um, looks like it brought the sunshine with it too, which was nice. Oh, I also might have got a little bit carried away last night and uh, kind of finished a lot of the bike. So the brakes are all wired up and all good. I also added this sick gold chain I had knocking about and um, it shifts pretty well. Well, no, that's not quite true. It does skip a little bit in the middle, but it just it just needs a little fine tune. Just a little fine tune. I also added a little bit of length to the chain before anybody says anything. Uh, when it's in that top cog, it's, um, it's quite stretched out, so it's a little bit better now. Also, the bolts that I had here, if they're all the way tightened in, the chain couldn't quite get to the low cog. Um, so I've kind of just, I started pulling them out and then kind of left them like that. I'm, they might come out completely, but from the right angle, they look cool. All that was left was to add the saddle. So I picked this one. It's a Sealy Royal. It's, uh, I wanted something that was just really, really comfortable, really. And um, this one had springs in it, so it gave me a little bit of cushion, as well as it being gel and super squishy. Okay, now just to add it to the bike, and we are done. Better get about my way. This is the start of a new day. Feel fresher than toothpaste. Singing out, this be the new thing. New swing set. I'ma go for the loop, man. I'm a fruit gone loopy. That's the Sammy the toucan. Screaming out, who cares? My soul bare. I'm done with the cold stare. My heart hang off the tip of my shoestring. Stay untied, that's usual. I'm not put together. Do better than you do. That's magic. I'm voodoo. You and that's that. That's the end of the build. And uh, yeah, it went pretty well. That's the end of another video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. And, um, and yeah, I'm lost for words. That was sick. I really enjoyed that one. Um, I'm going to pack this bike up literally in the next 10 minutes and take it to my dad. So next week's video will be a ride with my dad and a bit of a reveal and a couple of little tweaks to finish it off. 